Well, the Republicans are, are trying to figure out who uh, the nominee is going to be here in New Hampshire and elsewhere. You know what uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are going to do this week? They've got a number of events talking about reproductive rights. Because even though we're talking about stuff like <laughs> right now, ultimately what the Democrats are going to run on closer to November is Dobbs. And how former President Trump uh, was able to get three justices on the Supreme Court. It is such an effective tool. Every time the Democrats have run on that, they have won. Reproductive rights, as you know, Steve, is a spin. Freedom, it's pro-abortion. Well, first of all, it is not literally just re re restricted to the idea of abortion. There's a reason you use a term that talks about all of the issues. And what exactly is the spin there? It's about reproduction. It's about your rights. I understand that people use the terms they want for all sorts of things, but as terms go, I feel like it's pretty accurate, pretty descriptive, but he's angry about it. And he's not angry about the term. He's angry about the fact that what Steve Ducey said there seems to be true in election after election, even in red states, even when it's you know politicians who are supporting or are rejecting these rights, when it's ballot initiatives, it does seem to be a big winner. And that clearly bothers Brian Kilmeade. And even though Steve Ducey there is just trying to advise the Republicans and what he sees as what they need to do or not do to win, can we just get them out of product? Like, no, we should be we should be insulting them and we should be telling them that they're pro-abortion. Like, yes, well, Republican Party, who do you want to follow? They're both conservatives, by the way. But Steve Ducey, who seems to want you to win, or Brian Kilmeade, who wants you to feel good about it when you're losing. Okay, you guys decide. Daniel, what do you think? I mean, I, I literally agree with what you're saying. It's just a really frustrating thing for me to watch. I'm almost at a loss of words at sometimes because it feels like they they are, we are not asking as a people for abortion without limitation, but they're asking for anti-abortion with no exceptions. And I think mm -hmm. that is the problem here. You know, we need to realize that there's a lot of nuance when it comes to a lot of this stuff. And you know, they just want to be like, no, you're just pro-abortion. That's it. It's it, it, that may not be the stance. There's a lot of issues like that woman's example. You know, horrifying um, that people yeah. could be caught and do this stuff like this. And to have to leave your state for any kind of emergency health care, I mean, it just doesn't even seem like that. Doesn't that seems un-American? Yeah, yeah. Uh, inhuman too. Head kill me. Go to that woman and tell her that she's pro-abortion. That she just wanted one, that's it. It wasn't a devastating experience for her. It wasn't a risk to her health. It didn't, you know, it didn't deeply upset her. This woman who already had multiple kids and wants to have more, she's just pro-abortion. And look, he's not gonna go as far and be as insulting and misogynistic as perhaps some of the other right-wingers are, but it's the same tone, the idea that, you guys are just lazy sluts and you just want to do whatever you want to do. You monster. I used to People go to a church that used to have abortion protests. And the way they would frame it is, oh, there's like these wealthy women who realize they're having another boy and they wanted a girl. So they're going to have an abort. Like it, it was so nonchalant the way they would frame that people were having abortions that I could yeah. see people getting angry and rallying behind this. But uh, clearly that's not the case when you know people are telling their stories. And I'm glad that you know some people get their stories out there so people could know what's really going on. Yeah, and by the way, as we always acknowledge, if if your worry is about the wealthy people just opting in this, wealthy people are always going to be able to get an abortion. Okay, they're not. Gonna, oh God, I like I know that I could just like fly somewhere else, but like it's just so much trouble to drive to the airport. If you're wealthy, if you have the resources, you're gonna get to a place where you can get the abortion that you apparently are so hot to have or whatever. It's just all made up. It's all faux concern. It's just another way to control what people do with their bodies, um, and. There's another form of control that Kilmeade is in favor of here. He's specifically advising Republicans to be dishonest about what they actually believe, saying, don't get into the weeks talks. Don't talk about how many weeks, six or 12. Yeah, why bring why? that up? Well, you know why? Because <laughs> it looks really bad for them when they do it. He's not saying don't set, don't go for six, don't go for 12. He's just saying, 
don't talk about it like because it looks really bad for us. So if you could lie to people and then once you get in office, strip away their rights after you lied them into voting for you. That is what Kilmeade is pushing for here. Kilmeade every once in a while says a reasonable thing or says a compassionate thing. But then the rest of the time he reminds you that God damn is this guy not on your side. And by the way, speaking of sides, 80% of voters, including 65% of Republicans say that they oppose a national abortion ban. I mean, look, I understand we're in partisan tribal extremist times, everybody's divided, but that is overwhelming. The country is screaming, no, we do not want this. And yet you have people pushing for it still. So I could see this being a big part. Um, of the 2024 election. Right now, Democrats are trying to get it on the ballot in a number of swing states it to be a thing that people can be brought to the polls to vote on, which look, honestly, the Republican Party used like votes on gay marriage and stuff for the last like 20 years to drive their voters to the polls. So as much as I don't necessarily want politics to be overly focused on cultural issues, if it's getting people to the polls in support of people's rights and bodily autonomy, I think that it's fair play. Any final points? No, I'm glad it is going to be reviewed on the ballot in some places because it needs to be. People need to just, you know, re confirm that, you know, it needs to be legal. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is. So you don't miss anything.